What is the role of nasopharyngeal microbiome in the upper respiratory infection? Um, so there are a lot of polymicrobial diseases like otitis media uh, where they play a key role eh, where the, the actually the infection starts in the nasopharynx and then it goes to the, the, the stachyrus um, tube and actually I started to investigate the nasopharyngeal microbiota because it's if you have infections there it's one of the most important reasons to get antibiotics in children against otitis media acute or, or chronic and I'm already studying probiotics and the microbiome for more than 15 years first on the gut and later on the vaginal microbiota but I, it, I found it surprising as a mother that there were actually no probiotics targeting the upper respirators the nasopharynx so um, although you treat them a lot with antibiotics so I think it's not a good idea so for children, I think otitis media is one of the most important infections. For adults, also p people experience a lot with problems of the nasopharynx and it translates to the sinuses. Uh, they're all in connections and in, in Belgium, I think 11% and also in Europe, 11% of the adults ha uh, suffer from chronic rhinosinusitis for which also no real treatments are available. You can, sometimes antibiotics are being prescribed. If you have a lot of complaints, you can get surgery. And I believe there's also a huge potential for probiotics because it's also a polymicrobial disease. So it means a lot of different pathogens can be involved and they can cause inflammation, various disruption, uh, but it's not a single pathogen that is causing the disease. And what kind of probiotics will be tested? That's of course the key question. At the moment it's quite difficult to know because the microbiota of the upper respiratory tract and the nasopharynx is different from the gut or the gastrointestinal and, and other niches. Um, however, there are already some indications that also lactic acid bacteria can be potentially a probiotic for this niche. There are some epidemiological studies and comparative microbiome studies um, showing that in disease lactic acid bacteria are reduced. So it's the first indication that if they are reduced you have a higher risk of getting a, an, an infection or a con an inflammatory conditions of the, of the nasal pharynx. So the goal could be that uh, to find a strain uh, that can compete with pathogens. Yeah. So Indeed, and that's also what we are doing in our research, is, is doing comparisons in the microbiome of healthy individuals with diseased individuals, people with a chronic uh, or persistent dysbiosis of the nasopharynx and the sinuses, because we want to indeed to look for the bacteria that are um, diminished in, in the diseased individuals. And we believe that those bacteria have a potential as, as a probiotic. And of course, in the first place, we think about lactic acid bacteria because they have a history of safe use. They are generally recognized as safe or, or they have a qualified presumption of safety. But there's also a lot of potential for other commensals to be explored as probiotics.